Good morning, brethren, sisters. It's your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This is kind of a very impromptu video, but um, starting with one verse, Psalm 53, just one verse to start. Psalm 53, verse 5. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. <coughs> despised them. There were they in great fear where no fear was. Today is the 4th, September the 4th. And I don't know in whatever nation you may be in. Uh, might be, uh, it's right now 6.41 a.m. my time. Today is the 4th. Tell me something. Have you read the 4th proverb for today? Hmm? I did, of course. Come on, work with my fingers. Get over there. All right. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. You know, there they were in great fear where no fear was. When it comes to COVID-19, the Corona gonna get you virus, the poison crown. Yes, it was. It is a real man-made biological weapon created when you link it back at the command of the Jesuit order by the Purbright Institute, patented by a United States patent. It's a man-made virus, a biological weapon. And yes, there was a time when it was out. And um, yes, some people have died uh, through complications of coronavirus. But those were ones who had, as they say, compromised immune systems, pre-existing conditions. But the recovery rate of it is, is incredible. It is far less deadly, not deadly at all, than the common flu. And it has passed, I believe. I really do believe that. But you know who is keeping it alive? Who are keeping people in fear where no fear was? The media. The Jesuit-controlled media. Someone had said, uh, and a brother, uh, Brother Justin had said to me, um, and he got it from somewhere else that I'm guaranteed not to get the coronavirus. How's that? Because I don't watch television. <laughs> <coughs> you know, here on the YouTube, uh, the ticker thing, whatever it's called, they're still, they're not letting it go. They're keeping it up. The media, the Jesuits, are the ones that are keeping this pandemic alive. They are the ones. With all these new cases and all this, I don't buy it anymore. I don't buy it. I really don't. Uh, yes, I, uh, yes, there is actual evidence that says that yes, COVID-19 was, is real. I mean, it would, I mean, you don't patent something that's not fake, but, but it's not deadly. It's not dangerous. These people have been put in fear where no fear was by the media. It is the media, the Jesuit controlled media that is keeping it alive, preparing people for the second wave. It's coming. But with that said, 
Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to read this. Okay? Proverbs chapter 4 in its entirety. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. Hold your place there. Job 28, verse 28. What is wisdom? Job 28, verse 28, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And to depart from evil is understanding. Go back now to Proverbs chapter 4. When thou go, uh, picking up at verse 12, when thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Isn't it astonishing that the people who attack the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ here on YouTube, it seems that they don't sleep, do they? Do they? They, they uh, attack at these obtruse hours. That's not a coincidence there, brethren, sisters. Why? <laughs> For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. <laughs> and I love this. You could kind of tie this into the Eucharist, I believe. For they eat the bread of wickedness, the round bale cookie, and drink the wine of violence. <laughs> but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more onto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. <laughs> put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put forth far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, think. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. 
Remove thy foot from evil. You know, I've even seen in comments, and I've run into it out there, where people will say things to you. It's like, thanks for endangering my life for not wearing a mask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. There they were in great fear where no fear was. <laughs> But brethren, I know that this close, this soon, to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, we might want to compromise or you might run into, it's like, well, I, I got to go in there. So I'm, no, no. We have especially started ordering things more off of offline. Amazon, you know, they get get it delivered to your near front door. You <laughs> you'd be amazed at what you can get off uh, Amazon. It's kind of freaky in a way, but we have to remember, brethren, sisters, to be diligent, to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Remove thy foot from evil. Proverbs chapter 22. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 22. Verses 3 under verse 6. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Look at verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This modern generation that is out there today, this uh, youthful generation, you know how a lot of these children have been brought up? They're fancy schmancy cell phones. They have, be, they have been desensitized through video games, through television shows that depict murder, and that say that evil is good and good is evil. This generation that has come, that is here upon us now, is a generation that has been trained up in a way that they should go. And, will, and if they get old, they will not depart from it. Now, that's not saying that there is no hope. Of course not. But we have to really take hold of the vanity. The vanity that is upon us. Now, that does not mean that we, the Church of the Living God, should not continue to strive out there, you know, putting out uh, tracks. Whenever the Lord gives you a chance to witness, to speak, take it. Take it greedily. <laughs> but make sure it is of the Lord's doing and not you trying to do something for the Lord. Okay? Just make sure of that. And brethren, again, the media, they are the ones that are keeping this alive. The Jesuits, 
through the media, because what media are the ones that are keeping this thing alive. And as I have said to you before, brethren, you watch. The second wave is going to be brutal. It's going to be very brutal. We need to be mindful of this. And one verse in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Doors are being closed. Opportunities are lessening. Again, we as the Church of the Living God need to continue to fight the good fight of faith, stay strong, to preach the word, to be instant in season and out of season. Okay? We need to continue that. But we also have to keep in our, in our minds, brothers and sisters, that the door is closing. Don't stop fighting. But the door is closing. The door is closing. When you have people out there who say things to you like, like exactly that, Thank you for endangering my life or not wearing a ha-ha. You, you could give these people all the evidence in the world about how the face masks are useless, that they are actually more harmful to your health and increase your chances of getting a sickness, a sickness, than if you didn't wear one. But their hearts are hardened. And you look on uh, you look on YouTube at certain things like uh, Brother Justin. He sent me that thing about that Elon Musk guy who has some who created some kind of brain thing that's the size of a coin that they take a chunk out of your head and put this thing in there and they put like the wires onto your brain or something like that. And also, Brother Jeff Jones put a link um, on one of the videos about how this, the Catholic disease creators uh, have planned to have the vaccine ready by November, I believe. They've always had it. They've always had it. And it's vanity. A vanity, Seth the preacher. All is vanity. Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters. These people are ready. Like I've said to you before, I do believe that there is going to be a trigger event that's going to uh, make even the diehard anti-vaxxer to, you know, roll up that sleeve, give it to me. We mustn't stop fighting, brethren. We must not give up. We must not give up. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 1, under verse 4. Verses 1 under verse 4. Isaiah chapter 10. This was part of my devotional study this morning. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievous grievousness which they have prescribed <laughs> to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless Jesuits, <laughs> that, uh, you know, for our instruction and in righteousness, that, look, 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 
unrighteous decrees? Hello? <laughs> and that right grievousness which they have prescribed? Hello? And to turn aside the needy from judgment? And to take away the right from the poor of my people? See, when the second wave thing hits, they're going to close everything down again. And people are going to be forced to be in their homes. And I personally believe that's going to lead to a lot of revolt. And with the uh, Masonic Jesuit uh, Black Lives Matter movement um, that is instilling violence in many parts of uh America, civil unrest, as they call, and the and coming martial law is getting closer. But see, they don't talk about that, do they? It's all Corona gonna get you, Corona gonna get you, Corona gonna get you. They're keeping something that is dead alive. Verse 3 in Isaiah chapter 10. And what will ye do in the day of visitation <laughs> and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow, they shall bow down under the prisoners. And they shall fall under the, under the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. And see, brethren, when you, when you, brothers, sisters, as the church of the living God, speak the truth of what's going on, and warn people and set examples out there by not conforming to these Jesuit maxims. Ha <laughs> ha! The social distancing. The example you are setting, even in their anger, is one that will not be forgotten once we are taken up, once we are caught up, excuse me. Okay? And you tell me, brother, sister, when you, the Church of the Living God, those of you who are truly saved and born again, when you are out there standing on the word of the Lord, when you are standing for truth, tell me, does this sound familiar to you? Jeremiah, one verse, Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 4. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death, for thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in the city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You ever run into this one yet, huh? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Jeremiah, now, chapter 4. Um, the beloved Alexander Hartley, uh, my dear brother, my dear friend, is um, going through the book of Jeremiah. Um, check out um, his channel and listen to um, him read the book of Jeremiah. Um, a wonderful, wonderful rendition of the scriptures done by Alexander Hartley. But now you've noticed so far, yeah, that we're in the Old Testament. Yes, our instruction and in righteousness. We need a lot of it right now. We need a lot of it right now. But Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 18. 
Now, we have to remember while reading out of the Old Testament that doctrinally, a lot of this does not apply for us today in the time of the Gentiles, this current dispensation. But brother, sister, for all things that were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Paraphrase that a little bit. Romans 15 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 4 verses 1 on to verse 18. Now, we read in Proverbs, Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. We need to check ourselves as well, brethren. We need to check ourselves. Because like I said, the example we are setting out there is going to speak volumes after we are caught up. We can't really look at it in the present, per se. We have to look at it of what example is going to be left once we are caught up. That's why you can't quit. That's why you can't quit. Then again, if you say, our Lord tarrieth, and you begin to eat and drink and be drunken with the rest of them. You go find that verse on your own time, okay? <laughs> if you're sanctified or if your sanctification is being muddled by you dabbling, Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 18. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord, to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your foul ground, and sow not among thorns. <clears throat> you got to resist the urge. You got to resist that temptation. Well, I, there's no grocery stores. I, 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 okay, they're not letting me in. They, you know, here the Wally World apparently in my town here in Woodstock, or excuse me, Woodchuck, Illinois, <laughs> um, they kick people out. They kick people out if they do not wear. <laughs> they do, and apparently they will even call the police if people give them a hassle. Now I don't know how what it's like in uh, uh, whatever state in the union you are here in America. But I also am aware, like in the um, in the country of Australia, things like that are far worse over there. Remember to keep your brothers and sisters in Australia in your prayers, okay? But look at verse 3. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your foul ground and sow not among thorns. If you're watching this, you have the ability to go online. Um, find another way. Have it delivered to your door. Okay? Get out there still. Let's continue. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Personally, I believe that's a reference onto the Holocaust. That's just my personal opinion. Verse 5. Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together, and say, Assemble yourselves, and let us go into the defensed cities. <clears throat> Set up the standard toward Zion. Retire, stay not. For I will bring evil from the north, and a great destruction. 
The lion has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. <clears throat> For this, gird you with sackcloth, lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. And it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes, and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. Yesterday, my wife and I, we, um, we happened upon um, a video talking about these <laughs> care Catholic, uh, word faith people. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Talking about all these prophecies and, oh, yeah, yeah. Those people, those prosperity, faith, whatever heretics, devils are called, um, they're, they're going to be in hell with the door shut. And with everything going on as it is now, people who might have um, be stirred just a little to search for the Lord, yet they go to the television to do it. Let's continue. Then said I, oh Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall have peace. Whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. Yeah, you'll have peace once the uh, vaccine is released. Yeah, right. At that time, it shall be, at that time, shall it be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. And any of you outside my nation of America, us Americans, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and, publish, and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her round about, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto the heart. Jeremiah, chapter 23. And then you have these hirelings, uh, like Brother Brian Denlinger did that thing about John MacArthur. <laughs> I got one of his study Bibles, the ESV. Uh, that guy's a nut. <laughs> He really is. Uh, but, you know, uh, you got these Christians who, even at this hour, are talking about, what do you, what, what do you think about revival, Brad? <laughs> well, 
Or, we got to get these people churched. <laughs> you ever heard that one? <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. We're going to read this. Can you handle it? Jeremiah, <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Future prophecy yet to happen. Okay. Kind of has happened because some Jews are returning to Israel right now as we speak. But its fulfillment is yet to come. Verse four, and I will set, and I will, I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed; neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Verse five, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and that's a capital B referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. All capital letters, the Lord our righteousness, a clear prophecy unto the coming millennial kingdom, where Jesus Christ, God the Father, will be ruling and reigning as king in Jerusalem. Okay? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land, referencing, uh, I believe, in fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 9. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man with whom wine hath overcome, because of the Lord, and because of the words of his holiness. You know, a brother of mine was talking well, recently about how he had uh, an, a rare, odd day where things just didn't seem real. Could it be possible that you might have been feeling what the Lord feels? Have you ever woke up there, Church of the Living God, for no explainable reason, but just feel off? Remember, we are seated in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know? Feeling what the Lord feels? Let's continue. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at these abominable church buildings. Yeah, need I say anything more? Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. 
they shall be driven out and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal, and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthened also the hands of evildoers. And look at what happens here on YouTube with all these easy believism heretics, these Jesuits, these Jesuit coadjutors. Yeah. Yeah, I do tend to get a little chafed whenever I talk about Catholicism. Let's continue. That none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. And make them drink the water of gall, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Like I said, my wife and I were watching about, you know, you're still going to have a harvest. You're going to have a great harvest. Yes, yes. Yeah, just believe with no repentance. No brokenness of yourself. No coming to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Just believe. Just make a mental decision up here uh, without coming to him broken. Yeah. 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 And the people love to have it so. Thus saith the, uh, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Oops. Goodbye, brethren. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. These easy believism heretics, Jesuits and Jesuit coadjutors, who will not confront sin. No. They will encourage you in your sin. They encourage you in your sin. They don't love you because they don't address it in themselves and in their whatever you want to call them, their little family. <laughs> Continuing, they speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, and who and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Cheer to the living God. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. All you easy believism heretics, all you Jesuits and you coadjutors, all you care Catholics, all you wicked perverts who hate the Lord, who hate the authorized version of the scriptures. You're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of danger. But what do you care? You don't, because you serve your master, Satan, and his church, the Vatican. Let's continue. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days he shall consider it perfectly. Again, prophesy a prophecy unto the Jews. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. 
very quickly on that. Um, be very cautious about someone for, uh, this is a, for instruction in righteousness, obviously, but be very cautious for someone who is very quick to, um, to speak in the name of the Lord, where they don't um, have hesitation. For example, um, I take I take this very seriously. I do. I take this very seriously, and I wait on the Lord for Him to do the works through a vessel such as me, such as you. But see, there are those out there who take it upon themselves, who are not being guided of the Lord. They're running. They're running without the Lord's unction. I actually know of a few people like that. Who are following in the footsteps of others and are running to make, as it were, a name for themselves. You need to check yourself, young man. You need to be very careful. Do you truly know who it is you are dealing with? And who is going to tell you that besides someone who loves you? Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord again. Do you know who you are messing with? Verse 25, I have heard what, what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. And what does the Lord say about the heart? Huh? That is deceitful. Obviously. Oh, but God knows your heart. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have for forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell the dream. And he that hath my word... Let him speak my word faithfully. You're getting this, right, brethren, and sisters? What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? And when you're out there, Amongst the loss. Uh, number one, do you do you carry a Bible with you? I caught myself, Brother Matthew. Excuse me. Do you carry the authorized version of the scriptures with you? See? See, Brother Matthew? I, I'm working on it here. There you go. Forgive me. Forgive me. But when you're outside, do you carry the scriptures with you? Do you? Are you prepared like that? 
Let's continue. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my per people to err by their lies. All you false YouTube Jesuits, all you fakes, the Lord is your enemy. Uh, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ, by the way, um, it's going to be a fearful thing. You know, we're going to um, we're going to have our faces in the dirt rather than a big homecoming. OK. Those of you who preach lies. Having the Lord as your enemy. Oh, wow. Have fun storming the castle. Let's read that again, verse 32. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people, or the prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. See, what does that mean? Those who are calling themselves Christians and are not of the church of the living God. Thus shall ye say, thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God. Again. All you Jesuits and you coadjutors, just believe. It's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. <laughs> oh. Oh. I often say to my brothers and sisters, I hope you're not behind me at the judgment seat of Christ. But uh, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, you false prophets, you Jesuits. No way, and I'm not in your shoes. Neither is the church of the living God. You need to repent. If you even can. Let's continue. Let's read that again. And the burden of the Lord ye and the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden, for ye have perverted the words of the living God. Of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say that this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you. And I will forsake you and the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. Woe unto you Jesuits, beg your pardon, brethren, and you coadjutors, all you false prophets. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. And, you know, brethren, sisters, um, we have to remember. We have to remember this, brethren. 
Hold on one second. One second, brethren. Hold on, I'm going to pause this real quickly. Sorry about that, brethren. Let us remember, Church of the Living God. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 on to verse 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And, hi, let's never forget this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, the Vatican and the Jesuit order, the Masons and all their suborders. It's the Vatican, Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, the Vatican and his army, the Jesuits. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And what is a breastplate cover? Your heart. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Be instant in season and out of season. Always be ready to give an answer to uh, for the reason of the hope that is within you. Not answer every single question because there are foolish and unlearned questions just meant to distract and to cause division and strife. But always be ready to give an answer for the reason of the hope that is within you. I'm paraphrasing, but I can pardon. Okay? The instant in season, out of season. Okay? And above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, like people who will attack you here on YouTube and out there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyone could be brave while sitting behind a plastic screen, plus uh, pressing buttons, or using their, their thumbs on a cell phone. But out there, oh boy. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Knowing that you have eternal life. Never doubting. And I love this. And the sword of of the capital S spirit, which is the Word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And take the helmet of salvation and the word and the sword of the spirit, which is the Word of God. Um, again, I, I don't care if you're going out to get your mail. I've said this to you many times. I don't care if you're going out to get your mail. I don't care if you're putting out the garbage, walking your dog, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother, sister, take the scriptures with you. And hey, if you need a set of scriptures, get a hold of me. Ask around. Ask some of the brethren. I'll send you a set of scriptures if you need them. Really, if you need one. If you need a pocket-sized one, I got uh, four left. You need one? Always carry the scriptures on you. Always. 
always. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the capital S spirit, and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. No, my wife yesterday she told me that um, and incidentally brethren um, when the Jesuits release the uh, the vaccine which they've always had um, my wife praise the Lord is finally not going to be at her job anymore finally 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 my wife is virtually crippled and she should be staying at home. And of course, with what's happening with us here now, meaning here with me and with you, the uh, Church of the Living God, my wife struggles every once in a while with fear about these things. But once the vaccination um, is released, she's not going to be employed. Praise the Lord. She's going to be a keeper at home. Yay. 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 But brethren, brethren, let us fight the good fight. Let us continue. No matter what, but we need to remember that it need be of the Lord's doing and not our own. That sometimes takes patience. <laughs> yeah, right? So, anyway, um, like I said, this was very impromptu. Um, not like I've been doing lately where, you know, I've been searching the scriptures that you know i search the scriptures you know what i'm saying this was something like brad okay may the lord be glorified the lord be glorified may we take heed to what we've looked at this morning if if you have and again um i want to thank all of you for if it wasn't for the lord through you the body of christ my wife would be living with her son and I would be out on the streets. My wife would never be able to be homeless. There's no way. There's no way. And um, they said we, we would take, you know, we would take mom, you know, my wife's son, my uh, uh, stepson, right? Yeah. That's like a, that. There's room for her, but not for the both of you. It's like, fine, that's fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you again. But anyway, brethren, I do have some things to, I have to do this morning. Um, incidentally, uh, again, I want to apologize and ask you, brothers and sisters, for forgiveness uh, for my, me being bad at getting back at some of you. Uh, last night I was supposed to call a um, uh, beloved brother and I kind of fell asleep. I'm so sorry. But anyway, I love you. We are praying for so many of you. And for those who have family members who are not, not saved, that they may come unto the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, by grace through faith and get saved. It is too late. Anyway, that's it. I love you. See you in the next video.
whenever or whatever the Lord will have me to speak about. Bye-bye, beloved.